One noteworthy example occurred just two weeks ago, after our subpoenas were unanimously approved. The New York Post, the country's fourth largest newspaper, ran a story revealing communications between Hunter Biden and a Ukrainian official. The report alleged that Hunter Biden facilitated a meeting with his father, Joe Biden, who was then Vice President of the United States. Almost immediately, both Twitter and Facebook took steps to block or limit access to the story. Facebook, according to its policy communications manager, began, quote, reducing its distribution on the platform, unquote, pending a third-party check, a third-party fact check. Twitter went beyond that, blocking all users, including the House Judiciary Committee, from sharing the article on feeds and through direct messages. Twitter even locked the New York Post account entirely, claiming the story included hacked materials and was potentially harmful. It is worth noting that both Twitter and Facebook's aversion to hacked materials has not always been so, so stringent. For example, when the president's tax returns were illegally leaked, neither company acted to restrict access to that information. Similarly, the now discredited Steele dossier was widely shared without fact-checking or disclaimers. This apparent double standard would be appalling under normal circumstances, but the fact that selective censorship is occurring in the midst of the 2020 election cycle dramatically amplifies the power wielded by Facebook and Twitter. Google recently generated its own controversy when it was revealed that the company threatened to cut off several conservative websites, including the Federalist, from their ad platform. Make no mistake, for sites that rely heavily on advertising revenue for their bottom line, being blocked from Google's services or demonetized can be a death sentence. According to Google, the offense of these websites was hosting user-submitted comment sections that included objectionable content. But Google's own platform, YouTube, hosts user submitted comment sections for every video uploaded. It seems that Google is far more zealous in policing conservative sites than its own YouTube platform for the same types of offensive and outrageous language. It is ironic that when the subject is net neutrality, technology companies, including Facebook, Google, and Twitter, have warned about the grave threat of blocking or throttling the flow of information on the internet. Meanwhile, these same companies are actively blocking and throttling the distribution of content on their own platforms and are using protections under Section 30 to do it. Is it any surprise that voices on the right are complaining about hypocrisy or even worse, anti-democratic election interference? These recent incidents are only the latest in a long trail of censorship and suppression of conservative voices on the internet.